live from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Lenovo Transform 2.0. Brought to you by Lenovo. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Lenovo Transform here in New York City. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We have two guests here on this segment. We have Kurt Skaugen, he is the president of Lenovo Data Center Group, and Brad Anderson, the corporate vice president of enterprise mobility for NetApp. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Well, thank, thank you for having me. So the big news of the day, the NetApp uh, Lenovo partnership, Explain to our viewers exactly what this means. This, these are two global powerhouses joining forces. Yeah, sure. So I think Lenovo has had uh, an amazing year. Last year in our Transform 1.0, we announced the largest server portfolio in our history. And this year we announced the largest data center, uh, data management and storage portfolio in our history with a partnership with NetApp. So Sorry. we're creating a multi-billion dollar global alliance, uh, a multi-year alliance, and it has a place in a joint venture in China, as well as we'll be distributing now products in over 160 countries in the world. So tell us about the, the background to this partnership. How did it come about? Well, the, you know, for, for NetApp, uh, you know, we were looking for expanding our reach. And, and there was two markets that were kind of underserved in, one being kind of the, the, you know, the commercial SMB, SME channel, and Lenovo has a, a high velocity channel there and a strong position. So Lenovo made complete sense in that space as well as in, in China, where we have a strong brand, but we're underserved there as well. And so, uh, who's better in China than Lenovo? And so, when, for us, this is all about go to market, and then the fact that they're a server vendor is just icing on the cake, because our other two server vendors in the marketplace are also our competitors. And then mm -hmm. Lenovo is so much more co uh, compatible and complementary to our entire business. Yeah, Kirk, maybe you could expand a little more, because it, when you look at storage today, Storage really is built on servers. You know, NetApp is, you know, at a it's a software company. Even back in the day, you know, NetApp was ever, <laughs> never. Some of the other storage companies spent a lot of time and money on the on the hardware pieces. NetApp, of course, had reliable, good, trustable hardware. But maybe explain, you know, how much kind of IP goes into this partnership. Yeah, sure. So I think today we have about 15% coverage of the overall storage market within Lenovo. And we've, we've grown our flash array business over 100% it's over the last four quarters. IDC had us at 30% quarter to quarter growth. So we've done well, but we only cover 15% yeah. of the market. After this announcement and, and shipping now, today, uh, we'll cover over 90% of the market yeah. in more than 160 countries. So we're using our global supply chain, which was ranked number five in the world uh, by Garner, uh, manufacturing in Europe, in uh, China, in Mexico, et cetera, to really expand this out through our channel partnership program. And in China, we're taking a very unique approach to this joint venture. This isn't about Terrible. taking global products Terrible. and just trying to force fit them <laughs> into China. China yeah. has unique software solutions, unique hyperscale requirements, so we're pooling our R&D there. Lenovo will be a 51% owner, NetApp a 49% owner, Brad's going to be on the board, and uh, there we're going to be delivering products in China for China. Yeah, it, it was a, you've got a lot of experience with that. You talked about coming in the future, there's an NFV software and hardware solution in China, so you, Lenovo has some experience doing this kind of engagement. Yeah, yeah I think we, uh, we have a more than 50% growth now, uh, year on year in China. We retooled a lot of the operations that we had there. We have a, a really nice broad portfolio now since we launched Think System and Think Agile, so it's a nice place to grow on. So today we talked about the joint venture with NetApp, but also the fact over the next year we'll be building out an, a telecom NFV company after having China Mobile and China Telecom with us at Mobile World Congress, uh, as well as new Edge Gateway and Edge Server Solutions. Yep. Brad, it, it's, uh, I know cloud's in your title uh, yes. for, for, for what you're doing. When I, when I hear NetApp talking, uh, you know, I see NetApp at all the cloud shows that we go to, uh, and you know, it's a very different world than yeah. you know, when I think about NetApp 10 years or 20 years ago as like you know, the NAS Filer company. <laughs> so you know, bring us up to speed of the kind yeah. of the NetApp today, the momentum and what this brings. Yeah, I mean, we are going through our own transformation where we were principally a storage company and now we want to be a data company and increasingly uh, to be a data company, you got to be a cloud company. And so uh, we continue the, to uh, develop the, you know, we, what we think are the, the, you know, the, you know, the best storage products in the world, but they're all cloud connected. And because and we want data to be able to flow you know, from prim to cloud and, and, and be able 
you know, customers be able to, you know, I mean, that's what really kind of fuels uh, this, you know, this digital enterprise is, is you know, data is the new oil. And so, uh, in doing that, we have kind of expanded NetApp's charter significantly to being the data authority in hybrid cloud, and hybrid being both the private and the public. And so, I, my, my port, part of my business is really focused on, uh, you know, providing products and solutions so customers can have you know, the same experience in building their own private clouds that they enjoy in, in the public, and then on the public side, we have partnerships with all the hyperscalers to t t put NetApps in there so they can deliver native cloud you know, data, data services. And so, this is a very different company where we're getting more and more cloudy every day, and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and that's part of our transformation intentionally. So the, the transformation, it's, it's, the, it's the theme of this, yes. of this conference, and, and you were up on the main stage talking about Lenovo's uh, turning this corner ex and really accelerating its growth, and also talking about the transformation from within the company, changing the, 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 the look of the leadership team in particular. Can you tell our viewers a little bit more about, about, about that strategy? Sure, so we acquired the IBM System X business in late 2014. We did some things really well, we did some things that uh, we've learned from. So we spent basically the last 18 months transforming the whole company. New channel programs, new system integrator partnerships, new training, certifying over 11,000 people in the world now, uh, tripling the number of our solution recipes, and we have transformed the management team as well. We replaced about 19 executives because we wanted the right balance of external and internal perspectives from our competitors as well as from the ex-Lenovo and ex-IBM employees. So we feel like we have a very uh, customer-centric uh, organization now and uh, again, you know, Gardner now is saying that we're growing 49% year on year in units. Uh, IDC said we're growing 87% year on year in revenue. So I think customers are responding to the new product line. Uh, over the last year, the Think System brand has really meant the highest customer performance, highest reliability, highest customer satisfaction, and as a result, it does take a while to transform, and I think over the last 12 months you've seen that, and we're exponentially growing now as a company. And you see it in your results. I mean, they're outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. So Brad, wonder, bring us inside the products a little bit. So we, we've got it's the, uh, uh, the, the Think System DE and DM. Of course, the storage industry, very much, they need to trust it, they need to understand yeah. it. Give us a little understand, I, I believe DE maybe has something to do with the E, you e know, series. The, the E series there, and <laughs> tells the DM yeah, yeah, yeah. series, what's underneath there, and how, how, how do people understand what's yeah, different, I mean, what's the, the same? Uh, yeah. So we're, we're taking platforms across our E series, our FAS, and our all flash arrays, so the DE corresponds to the E series. The DM will have our, uh, our, our FAS products, as well as our all flash array products in there, and so, so that's kind of the mapping. Uh, we're putting, initially, I think, uh, 10 products in there. Yep. Uh, we have the capacity to expand. I'm sure we're going to learn a lot because these are serving markets that NetApp doesn't typically serve, so I think not only is this going to uh, you know, give you know, uh, Lenovo the tools to compete, it's going to give us a lot of information to go even build better products, better solutions for both NetApp and our, 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 our Lenovo customers, so we're super excited about that. The second thing is, it's, it's ONTAP, it's the same core software and all the value and the, and, and the performance testing and validation that you get with NetApp, that all goes into the Lenovo branded products as well. And, and we have made it, you know, one of our hallmarks is our data fabric, all the data services that, that, you, you, that are on top of this that you can move data and manage data between platforms. That's really important for the NetApp customer all those values extend to the Lenovo customers. So if they also have NetApp in their environment or vice versa, they can share and move data between uh, both those platforms. So, uh, and so that's, you know, nowhere else in the industry is that's possible across vendors, let alone within. So how does it work when you are in the product development uh, process? You, two companies, both relentlessly focused on yeah. customers. This is part of your culture, part of your DNA. So how do you work together in terms of of innovating and collaborating? Well, I think the first thing is, if you just look at the core business, our server business and NetApp branded storage, or Lenovo branded storage based on NetApp's portfolio, we're going to have a better together solution. Yeah. So the first thing we're looking at is a set of solution recipes so that when you use NetApp and Lenovo together, you're going to get a better experience as a customer base. And so that's why I'm excited today. We've launched three times as many engineered solutions as we did a year ago. 
and train you know, these 11,000 people because we have a very solution-oriented sales force and a very complementary channel. Uh, from a development perspective, we're going to be building x management into our portfolio. So the same systems management software that is mission critical for Lenovo server products will now manage the Think System DE and DM products. So it's a very familiar management uh, interface for customers. There's an engineering effort to go on with that. And then on service and support, we're going to use over 10,000 people around the world that Lenovo has yeah. to go service and support these products so we can deliver a, a, a premium customer experience whether you're buying the server or the storage. Yeah. And, and back to the customer base, you know, we're going to, especially in China, have deep engineering collaborations oh, yeah. where we're walking into those customer bases and asking what's the unique about the China market. Yeah. And, um, and, and, it, 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 and it really helps that you know, the two companies are very complementary. So NetApp has deep storage uh, expertise. Lenovo has tr uh, tremendous compute expertise. So they're very complementary and, and, and as you know, customers want more and more complete solutions, we're learning, for, our engineers are learning from each other and, and it doesn't hurt the fact that you know, we have a large engineering, we NetApp have a large engineering population in, uh, in the research triangle where, where uh, Kurt's people <laughs> are at, so. That's right, we're probably uh, one kilometer away from each other in research Geography triangle Geography matters, <laughs> location, location. No, location. And, and, and our two support organizations are next door as well, and so uh, I, I, think, I think that proximity will only contribute to the collaboration. All right, so the storage industry actually has a relatively good track record of some deep, long partnerships. Yep. NetApp has had a number of them yes. over the years. Um, tell us, you know, what success look like? If we look back three years from now, what's this partnership? Well, what we've said publicly is we plan to have a multi-billion dollar, multi-year alliance. So that's uh, going to be fantastic as we grow in over 160 countries. We're going to use Lenovo's extensive supply chain network. So as one of the largest kind of procurers of componentry and things around the world, we get to leverage this global factory network to build even more value into that solution. And in China specifically, we've set a goal of being a top three storage player. So today we both have probably single digit share in China, but together with this collaboration, yeah. we are setting sites quite high to be in the top three over the next several years. No, I think that's exactly right. And I, and, 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 and I think those are all achievable goals in, but right now, we want to get out the gate fast. I mean, this is a partnership with two companies with a lot of momentum, and I, and I see this as a huge opportunity for both our companies to kind of amplify that, which, uh, that momentum uh, uh, near term. And so, while there's a lot of excitement on the future, I think success is going to look like you know, mm -hmm. some very exciting results that Kurt can share at Transform 3.0 next year. That's right, and for our customer base, we have already gone into production taking yeah. orders as of today, and tons of engineering, tons of manufacturing yeah. development. So we'll have a whole host of seed units and early access units so our customers can get their hands on this stuff right away and start testing it in their environment. As you said, it's an audacious vision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You announced an audacious vision last year, you did another one again this year. Um, so when you think about what you want to be talking about next year, I mean, you said what success looks like. What are some other things that you're that you're working on? You said this is a process. You, Lenovo has has turned the corner and it's got a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. um, but but what else are you? What else do you have on tap that you're that you're? Well, if we told all you that, you wouldn't have us uh, <laughs> here next yeah, year. Yeah, but, yeah. but I think you know today is about entry and mid range, about expanding Lenovo's breadth from 15 to 90 percent of the market and being very aggressive against our top competitors uh, that have a combined server storage portfolio. And I think as I've gone around the world, I've been in Latin America, in India, uh, our channel partners are incredibly excited about this. So I, I think while other customers might be taking business more and more direct, we've traditionally been very channel centric. So I've seen a lot of pull for choice in the market. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what we're going to deliver to our channel partners. But we will have a lot more in store. That I can yeah. promise you. Yeah. Um, this is phase one of a multi-phased, yeah. multi-year plan. Yeah, and, 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 and I, I think you know, there's a lot of things on the, uh, there's a lot of possibilities on the product development side and how we can do better products, but I think a lot of success is going to look, uh, it's going to come in or go to market. I mean, already, Kurt, since I've been here, I've had a channel partner come up and said, hey, this <laughs> makes me rethink think my channel partners all over again because now, that channel partner, who's a Lenovo, has the full breadth of the, the storage portfolio. So I think this is going to be really good for both of us, uh, particularly when you know, uh, you know, 
Lenovo and NetApp are both very channel friendly partners and uh, 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 companies and I, I think this is going to uh, be a catalyst to have more people on our, our side than ever before. Yeah, Kirk, just last thing, I, I, we spent a lot of time on the NetApp, just give you the opportunity to talk about some of the other breadth and choice and uh, other things that, that Lenovo has going on. We're going to talk to some of your team about you know, hyperconverge and hyperscale and uh, other hyper things. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think the, the good news about our growth now is, is that we're doing it across multiple segments of the industry. There isn't just one part of the market that's growing. So last year, we set an audacious goal of being the largest supercomputer company in the world by 2020. We've now crossed that actually this year. So we are the largest supercomputer company in the world. About one of every four supercomputers now are there. And we're expanding that into a lot of AI offerings as well with our four artificial intelligence centers from China, Germany, Taipei, Beijing, all having customers bring their AI workloads into a controlled environment with our partners, whether it's Intel, NVIDIA, or the FPGA vendors. So supercomputing's alive and well, and, and we continue to innovate with our warm water cooling technology that's yeah. going to be here in display. Uh, we think we're building one of the largest supercomputers in Europe right now using that technology. So not just helping solve global warming, but being more energy efficient while we're computing on that as well. In hyperscale, we've grown to now uh, delivering six of the top 10 hyperscalers products. And we're doing that through basically starting with a white sheet of paper with our customers and building more than 30 customized products in the motherboard and the system and putting it through our entire supply chain versus just uh, in the past, maybe two years ago, just leveraging maybe ODM products. So significant growth in hyperscale where we're bringing on new billion dollar customers uh, on a regular basis now. And then in flash arrays, you know, our traditional business, we were uh, over 100% growth year on year. So we're building off a of momentum. We had great products, but only covering 15% of the market. Right. Now a much larger. Uh, last but not least, we did announce since Transform new divisions in Embedded and IoT as well as in telecommunications, NFV, and software. And we think each of those can be billion dollar groups within Lenovo. So that's probably a lot of what we'll be talking about next year is the announcements and innovations we've had on what will be Transform 3.0 probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're already looking forward to the next Transform. 3.0 will be cubed, so we look forward to yeah. having yeah. you oh to talk Stu. about it. So. Very yeah, nice, yeah, yeah. very nice. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Brad and Kirk, for being yeah. on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will have more from Lenovo Transform and theCUBE's live coverage just after this.